Broderick Jones continues to impress in OTAs, what that means for the offensive line and more offensive line talk here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting app and especially on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it on YouTube. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making us your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of the NFL. Make every moment more by visiting FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started now. We talked about Joey Porter Jr. and Corey Trice on the Friday episode, which was good. They looked, so, they've looked solid. They've impressed people, but so is Broderick Jones, and he's the biggest of the rookies. Literally, he's the biggest, but he's also the first round pick that they traded up to get in the first round. Um, and there's a lot of hope being pinned on him as a guy who could be the answer the Steelers have been looking for at the left tackle position for a long time. You think back to the guys who play left tackle for the Steelers, they've always been like solid veterans that they've brought in or guys that have filled in, but they've never been the key piece of the offensive line. Broderick Jones has the potential to do that. That's why I made him uh, my top offensive tackle in this draft class. I ranked him as the eighth best player in this draft class before the draft even happened. So, To me, I think that worked out for the Steelers. But there's always the question, how are they going to fare? How are they going to play out? And all the notes that we're getting in OTAs that we're hearing from players is that he's living up to the hype. He's he's an exceptional athlete, and he's learning fast on the job. Uh, Dan Moore Jr. called him a smart kid and an insane athlete, saying there's a crazy ability within him. Uh, He says he's going to be someone special. And this is Dan Moore Jr., who... We know Broderick Jones is coming for the job that he's had for the last two years. Uh, But also there's the note that, you know, Dan Moore Jr. has been flipping to the right side a little bit more in OTAs. Now, again, all these are are, are walkthroughs and OTAs don't mean everything. They're just, you know, football in shorts. And it's just the coaches trying to get the early installs of, hey, these are the things we, we want you guys to know when you get to training camp so that we can really get to work. These are the preliminaries of the preliminaries of the preliminaries. So, like, I know people, you know, ask, well, is he running first team? Is he running second team? He runs kind of all of them right now because they're they're getting him experience at different spots. They're moving guys around. That's part of what, what's happening here. But the important part is how is he learning? How is he taking on the different challenges that he, that he has? And how is he taking to the veterans you know, working with him. And I think that that is what's going to be interesting. And I talked to Broderick Jones about this uh, last week during OTAs. Here's Broderick Jones in the Steelers locker room last week. I don't, I really don't feel like it's just one set person, you know, Um, like even talking to the defensive guys. Uh, So, you know, just like it's, it's, it's a whole bunch of people, you know, just like in my ear. Uh, So it's really not one set person that I can just think of off the top of my head. So, Um, a little bit, cause once he goes to the right, you know, I have to step up and play on um, our first left tackle. So uh, at the end of the day, everybody's getting reps um, all around the board. So, you know, just taking it day by day, uh, rep by rep, trying to get better. Every- uh, so, sort of, kinda, but the defense rotates so much. I'm always going against different people at different times. So, you know, it's really not, not a big difference to me. Yeah, they, um, man, yeah. You know, it's good It's good playing, like, next to older guys like Isaac. <clears throat> he's a good person to be around, you know. He's cool, calm, collected, you know. So just sitting back watching him, the way he plays, the way he takes it, uh, everything day by day, you know, it's a good reminder for me um, how to, you know, just sit back, relax, um, you know, not overthink things, and just, you know, just play the game of football. 
So there you hear, you hear it right there. Broderick Jones saying he's been playing next to Isaac Seomalo, who we know has been playing with the first team offensive line. Broderick Jones is getting the reps, the mental reps to be there. But the biggest thing about Broderick Jones, and this is if you go back to the things that we said about him on this show and on other shows when we were talking about the the this draft class and whose strengths were strengths and whose weaknesses were their weaknesses. I said the biggest thing about Broderick Jones is that he has all the tools he just has to be willing to hear the coaching and apply it to his to his game. He his weak spot is just finishing with with technique, using the using the proper technique to use to maximize the skills of his size and uh, the, the assets that that are that are naturally there for him. And also just to peel you know, keep the aggression when and that's another thing that uh that some of the Steelers talked about with Broderick Jones. He's he is an aggressive guy. He's an aggressive player, but also know how to temper that how to you how to mix that with your technique so that you're being aggressive but you're doing it with sharp with sharp movements that are more coordinated guys like tj Watt do that a lot tj Watt's a very aggressive player he tries to set the tone against you every play but he also has several moves at his disposal that can catch you off guard and he's honed how to use those moves in different ways over the years it's going to take broderick jones time to figure that out but the fact that he's getting this kind of praise early on in OTAs, good sign. And again, not the world. It doesn't mean that he's ready to be an all-pro this year. It just means that he's taking the right steps. Here's Isaac Siomalu when he was talking about it. He said, Broderick's got all the tools and all the athleticism in the world. Um, he says, but obviously the offensive line is one of the things that takes time and experience. There are very rare, rare guys that can come in and play right away. I think Broderick possesses those tools. And when I, when I hear... Isaac Siomalo is saying something like that. He's praising the rookie and he's, he's, he's tempering as well. He's like, Hey, I'm not saying that this guy is going to come out and, you know, be, you know, be a world breaker in his, in, as a rookie. It's a lot of pressure to put on a young guy, but I think he can come in and play well and he can use his tools well and he can, he's going to make mistakes, but he's also going to have the athletic set, the athletic skill set to sometimes make up for those mistakes and also win more often th than he loses. And here's the other thing about this, and because because I know there's some people out there that are skeptical. His biggest weakness was just his form and pass protection when he was at Georgia. And some people are wondering, well, if he's going to be the starting left tackle and they're going up against Joey Bosa and the long line of really strong pass rushers like Miles Garrett's in week two and all the other guys the Steelers face early, isn't Kenny Pickett going to be a little exposed? I think that people got to remember that like the Steelers with the way that they've that they, they've done things the, the last the last few years, they have operated and with ways to protect certain guys that are that have been young coming into their organization. Dan Moore Jr., started as a left tackle in in the in the NFL for the Pittsburgh Steelers when he had to protect Ben Roethlisberger's blind side. And Ben Roethlisberger was at that time a more a wiser quarterback because he had been around the league for 16 years or however long it had been. But he was nowhere near the old athletic Ben where he would just dodge three guys and then throw a 50-yard bomb. Those days were long gone. I think that the Steelers will find a way to one help Broderick Jones. They brought like uh, you know, I, having Isaac Siomalo next to him. I think is very crucial because he's a guy that seems like a great teammate and a great player to learn from. Broderick Jones, you heard praising him as well. I think it's also going to be natural for the Steelers if they're looking at a side that they want to slide protection to. Maybe get put, leave it leave an extra tight end in there. Maybe Darnell Washington so that the Georgia guys can be next to each other. Maybe Najee Harris if you're in the shotgun. He he lines up on the left side of Kenny Pickett to help Broderick. Jones if, there, if there's anyone missing uh, but those are slight adjustments and comparing to the adjustments the Steelers have had to made over the past few years uh, just to, just a function whether it was Kenny Pickett being a rookie quarterback Ben Roethlisberger being you know the oldest version of himself that was extremely limited in his mobility uh, the Steelers have found so many different ways to navigate things I don't think that this would be some major kryptonite that would cause a big problem for the offense, unless Broderick Jones wasn't good. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I think that he's going to be a very strong player. We got more offensive line things to talk about and how they're meshing together. Talk to a, one of the vets on the offensive line as well. And we'll get into how he, how that's meshing with, uh, with Broderick Jones, all here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. So stay tuned. We're going to be keeping up on that topic. But first, before we do any of that, I want to remind you guys, this show is sponsored by FanDuel Sportsbook, the number one sportsbook in America. And the NBA Finals are on fire right now. The Miami Heat went into Denver, the place that everyone said they couldn't go and win, and did just that. Now it's 1-1 
going back to Miami. The best place to bet on what's going to happen next, FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And right now, FanDuel's giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet on FanDuel.com doesn't win. So to get that, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can sign up today, claim your no-sweat first bet. You can bet on Nikola Jokic getting a triple-double. You can bet on Jimmy Butler being Jimmy Butler, maybe being the finals MVP. You can bet on who you think is going to win the series or just win each game. Either way, you can do it on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Don't miss your shot at a no-sweat first bet up to $2,500 back at bonus bets when you join FanDuel today by going to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our talk about the offensive line and where they're going with things. Um, first, before we do that, I want to remind you guys, we still have our campaign going for the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Please donate anything you can to the uh, to the link that I've provided in the in the on screen or on the in the description of this show, whether it's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting app. Or if you are watching this on YouTube, just use that QR code and you can go send it right to your phone. Use that link, uh, donate to that. And if you donate $10 while asking a question, Question, you get your question on the show at least within a week of your donation. So thanks everyone who's done that. And we have another caller to call in here. And it was a question about the offensive line. And I thought it was a legitimate question that would open the lane to some some other discussions we could have about the offensive line. Uh, we had our friend Jesse Saldivar calling all the way from Colton, California. Here's Jesse. Hey, what's up, Chris? Uh, it's Jesse Saldivar, uh, Colton, California. I just had a quick question. Um, with Kevin Dotson being so much in the, uh, I feel like he's been a lot, talking a lot in the media recently. Um, do you think he's doing it out of like spite and like, uh, being jealous of everybody that the Steelers have brought in? Or do you just think, think he's doing it from like an objective, like, dance point, like saying Broderick Jones probably won't play his rookie year and just, uh, things of that nature? Um, yeah, just give me your standpoint on, Dotson and where you see him going forward and just how you feel on the on the line and the progressions they're making. Uh thank you. Have a good day. Love the show. Well, thank you, Jesse. We appreciate you calling in. I'm glad you love the show. I remember you can call in at 412-223-6644 uh anytime you got a question and again if you donate ten dollars to the cystic fibrosis foundation through the, through the campaign link that i've provided uh then you will get your call on the show within a week of your within at least a, a week of your donation but now um let's get to jesse's point here now let's clear up some things about what kevin dotson has said kevin dotson you know it's it's not as if kevin dotson is going on a radio show and talking about these things. He is just answering questions while he's in the locker room. And I don't think that he's doing anything too egregious right now. If you remember about a week or two ago when we had Jeff Hathorne on from 93.7, the fan, he brought up, he was like, hey, uh, Kevin Dotson informed us that like, you know, how it felt throughout the free agency period when they hired, when they hired Nick Hurt, when they signed Nick, Nate, uh, excuse me, Nate Herbig, the offensive lineman from the Eagles, the first offensive lineman from the Eagles. He was told by a player from, or by a, a, a person from the Steelers front office that, hey, that's not about you. Don't worry about it. You're still you're still the guy. But then when they signed Isaac Salemalu, they did not get tell him the same the same thing there. And so he kind of knew what that was. And after that, I mean, sure, I think he's you know, he's talked about broader. Just I don't think he said anything egregious and I don't think that he seem feels defeated i think he you know he feels a little maybe there's definitely some disappointment there and some obvious things you have to deal with when you know you're the job that you thought might be yours as a starter in the nfl is taken from you but he still seems to be very upbeat he's interacting with broderick here was a video of me just talking to kevin dotson just last week in fact the same day that i talked to broderick jones in that video listen to kevin dotson just talking about the offensive line and where they're at yeah i'm on my left but you know uh all I can do is work on the mental things and um, just keep on, keep it on, do whatever I can to um, give myself the best chance, you know. How does the line come together? You guys got new faces, but yeah. you know, guys still got a lot of guys from last year. Yeah, it, it really, it was almost like a, just a plug-in type thing. Like, nobody, it was, it was never awkward 
It's like first day joking. It's like they've been here the whole time. So it, it feels great to have that type of camaraderie. Started to prank Broderick yet? Or yeah, we already we already starting on Broderick. It's it's you know he got to go through it for the, at least for the first year. So a few things there. One, it was Kevin Dotson telling me. I asked him like, "Are you guys starting to prank Broderick Jones yet?" Because of you know hazing and happens with rookies it's natural the Steelers are especially they especially do this a lot and most teams do in all phases of sports but like literally as soon as I turn the camera off Broderick Jones comes over with all of the Steelers offensive linemen helmets like in his hands and like drops them down and he's like man that was so tired y'all sort this out yourselves I told y'all a little about that last week but it was just very funny to see it happen and just all the vets just kind of like chuckling as he as he brings it brings those in there but you hear Kevin Dotson like he's interacting with him they, they, he's still very much part of the team he's working on what he can right now it's just mental reps you get offensive linemen you make your money off of being physical you can't be physical in OTAs it's just you're just kind of take making sure you're doing the right thing take the right steps know the right adjustments communicate get on the same page with other people that's what he's trying to do right now and I think that again when you're talking about an offensive line they brought back all the guys who started last year Mason Cole James Daniels Chikuma Korfor Dan Moore Jr. Kevin Dotson all five of those guys they're back, and they just added pieces to them, whether it's Simalu, Herbig, or uh, or Broderick Jones. But the, I think the thing is, is that there's a culture there. These guys know what to expect of one another. There's communication already set up, and that's something that didn't exist going into last season. Remember, we were asking big questions: What's Mason Cole going to be like? What's James Daniels going to be like? You know, and how how are they going to be in, be, be fitting in with a very young offensive line with Chikuma Korfor, I believe is still like 25 years old, and Kevin Dotson and Dan Moore Jr., who are both fourth round picks. How is all of this going to work? Well, they figured that part out. And now they're capitalizing. So I think the offensive line is doing just fine. To answer that part of Jesse's question. And thank you, Jesse, again for your question. But now let's address the Kevin Dotson part of this. I, as you heard, like, I don't think Kevin Dotson is like checking out of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I think he's just acknowledged it's just the natural feeling of you spent your whole life working to get to one specific league, one specific level of your profession, and you got there and you're busting your butt and you're working hard but you're still getting getting replaced and that's how cruel the nfl business can be like you think but think about that in your own field wherever you work it whether it's in medical or or law or i don't know cooking and anything you know, property real estate whatever if you're uh, if, if you're there and you get to that level and then that could be taken away from you and what was it been two, three years since he started like getting, you know, prominent snaps in the Steelers offense, you know, that's, that's a tough thing. That's a tough pill to swallow, but he's swallowing it. And I think that he's handling it very professionally. You haven't seen him going on social media and leaving cryptic messages unless he has, and I just haven't seen them, but I, you know, I don't see him doing that kind of stuff. He's just he's just doing what he can. To, he said he's taking the mental reps. He's trying to be as ready as he can. He's at left right now, but he's ready to, to you know to be ready for what whatever the Steelers might throw at him. And I, I think that's what you're supposed to do there. It's the same thing that Mason Rudolph and Mitch Trubisky did last year. Last year, when Mason Rudolph, you know, a guy who was the only quarterback going coming the, the, from the Steelers before the 2022 season who was on the 2022 roster and uh the Mr. Risky came in took his job in free agency and then they drafted Kenny Pickett and then effectively he went from maybe being the starting quarterback for at least a bridge year or two for the Steelers to being their third stringer and you didn't hear him uh, pout and mope and want mope and whine he just he said hey I'm, move, I'm moving forward. It's the same thing with Mr. Biscuit. When he lost a job, well, both of those guys became assets to Kenny Pickett and helping him learn. I think Kevin Dotson is of the same ilk. He's a guy that's like, hey, like, I'm, you know, he, you, it's obvious. You, you're not going to lie. It's like, yeah, it's not great that I got benched and I'd love to get my spot back. But I think he's handling it very professionally. I don't think there's anything really malicious back here. And I don't think that you were saying that there was, Jesse. I'm not trying to uh, put anything uh, anything bad on your words but i think that there is always a question that is someone disgruntled in the situation and there's disappointed there's frustrated but disgruntled and you know unhappy with the team i don't sense that with kevin dots and i don't think this is a, a melvin ingram situation because we've seen a melvin ingram situation um but all that being said I don't think Kevin Dotson, I mean, is he disappointed? Sure, but I don't think that he's at a position where he's trying to do something to the team or he has he has nefarious agendas and plans, anything in his back pocket about how he's gonna leave and how he demanded trade. 
none of that's the case. I think that he likes the group that he's with right now. He's going to be as ready as he can. And look, here's the thing. If he, if he does start great, if he doesn't, you know what, then he can, he, he can wait for his turn. We talked about last year, how the Steelers were extremely fortunate to have their entire offensive line start every single game. That doesn't happen. The, the, it's going, the, 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 the chances are going to regress to the mean with the offensive line. They're going to have injuries this year, and Kevin Dotson is going to need to be ready for if one of those injuries is a guard and that he's ready to play that position uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think that he's holding him to get himself together well. We'll talk more about how this offensive line does fit together and what they're going to be trying to do in, in this upcoming season in a minute here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our talk on this Monday episode about the offensive line. And, yeah, I know I'm making this an entire offensive line episode, and some people might be like, Chris, I want to talk about the other positions. We talk about the other positions all the time. We're talking about the big dudes today. But I really think a big part of this is the Steelers have set themselves up like we talked about with the secondary on Friday, there's veterans that know what to do, that know how to carry the weight to make it easier for the rookies. And especially the rookie in Joey Porter jr. Who is expected to get early playing time. I don't think that the offensive line is at that calorie because you don't have a Patrick Peterson coming in. Who's a future hall of famer. You don't have make Fitzpatrick who is the best safety in the NFL. And maybe someday he'll be a future hall of hall of famer. Um, I don't think you have those assets on the offensive line, but what you do have is real chemistry guys that work together, lost together, fought together and won together. They grew through a lot last year. I think that's part of what Kevin Dotson was talking about. It was just like, Hey, like, you know, it's, it's, it's like coming back home when you get to be, be around those guys because of their closeness and how they understand each other and how they want to, work together and, and and how they've and how they were able to work together to become a better offensive line that is very much what's going to help Broderick Jones I think it's what's going to help Isaac Siomalu and I think that Siomalu is going to fit in very quickly with that from what we've we've come to understand so far with the Steelers and OTAs here and again what does that mean if the if the Steelers offensive line does fit together in that way if, if Broderick Jones at worst is just not a liability at best. He's a major asset in both the run game and pass protection. Either way, if you get one of those two or, you know, one of those two or both those two, as long as he's not a liability in the offensive line, you can, as I said before in the first, I mean, you can plan around that. You can set, send more help his way. Uh, you can, you can work on things there until he solidifies his technique and he gets sharper there. And you can also design plays that put it so that sometimes you're getting the ball out a bit quicker because you're doing what you're, because you're trying to, you're trying to protect his side. You're trying to make sure that he isn't giving up the big, the big uh, pass rush. That's going to mess up Kenny Pickett. But I don't think they're going to need to do that too much because I think Broderick Jones is going to be ready. Um, I think that he's going to be a guy that, and I'm not saying ready as in, <clears throat> I'm not saying ready as in, you know, completely fully ready to go, doesn't need to learn anything else. And he's just about to be a superstar offensive tackle, but ready in the sense that he's ready to come in, take, take on challenges, learn from mistakes, grow from them and be a better offensive tackle. He seems focused. He seems locked in and all these things seem like very, very good aspects for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But again, let's look at this projected offensive line here we're talking about. Broderick Jones, your rookie offensive tackle you drafted on on the left tackle position. Um, Isaac Siomalo at the left guard position, um, who was just just with the NFC champion Eagles and a big part of that, Jason Kelsey, giving him a lot of praise on his podcast for who he is and how the Steelers got a steal and just signing him for what they did. Um, Mason Cole, a stabilizing presence in the middle, not dominant, but a stabilizing presence, a guy that can set the second record straight, get everyone on the same page and communicate. Well, that's a big part of what they need. They got that. He's there. Then you, of course, uh, you have James Daniels who comes in and he was kind of the guy that everyone was wondering how good he would be. And I thought he was pretty decent. So you got him and then you got Chooks of who's been around for like what, five years now. And, He's the he's a really great size for the offensive tackle position. Still, I think needs to be better and more aggressive in, in his run blocking. But 
Um, I, I think all in all, that's a that's a strong group right there. And then if and then if you have all those guys that know each other and and already have that culture established, it's going to be that much easier for Broderick Jones to latch on to that, to become part of that. And heck, like you said, they're doing it already because he's having to bring things in and he's 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 you know he's he's having to he's having to you know, carry for helmets and everything. I think the Steelers offensive line is going to be further along this year than what maybe we've been projecting for a while now. I, I think the biggest thing I was just like, man, just like if Broderick Jones to start week one, which I don't think there's an if anymore. I think he's going to. Um even if Broderick Jones even wasn't to, to start week week one right away. You're going to you're going you're going to have these guys communicate well oiled, ready to go, and how to take on the San Francisco 49ers. And to me, I think, and Brian McFadden, by the way, on all things covered, former Steelers Super Bowl champion, has a show with Patrick Peterson. I believe he said that he feels like he's extremely confident about the Steelers' chances against the Niners. And I told you, as soon as I saw the Niners with the first game of the season, I thought that was the best thing the Steelers could could get there. It, 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 it might, it very well might be because if this offensive line goes into a war with the San Francisco 49ers and Broderick Jones also being a part of that offensive line and they come out victorious, I mean, that's a defense that went and added Javon Hargrave after they already had Bosa and all the other weapons that they've had up front. If you're able to get a group to, that can come out of that on the other side and feel good about themselves, they're not going to be afraid, afraid of another defensive line unit that ever comes through this year they're going to be like okay we, we took on the Niners we're good to me I just think that the Steelers have put themselves in the position where they have the vets to balance those moments they have the talent to push forward and to win those battles and I think it's a good place for the Steelers to be right now and we talked about this offensive line being essential to what the plans are. And I also don't think the Steelers are done investing in the offensive line. They are this year. But I also think that they're going to invest maybe another first, second, third round pick at another position next year. I think that they want to rebuild a great offensive line to protect Kenny Pickett, to, to run block the ball, to not just be a good offensive line, that catches you off guard and it's young and growing, but to become become a great offensive line again, like they were in the middle part of the 2010s when David DeCastro, Marquise Pouncey, Marcus Gilbert, they were together. And then you had Ramon Foster, Alejandro Villanueva, guys like that fitting in with them. But again, to get there, it's going to take time. And I do think that the, uh, uh, the offensive line, it took time for that group. Right? I always bring up when uh, Marquise Pouncey and David DeCastro, I think it was the 2013 season, and David DeCastro in the first game of the year tried to tried to cut block an opponent and took out Pouncey's knee, and Pouncey was out for the season. I don't think anything like that's going to happen to these guys, but it takes time to gel, even when you do know each other and you're coming back. But with Broderick Jones, I, I think that he's in a great situation of guys who are a community amongst themselves and the offensive linemen of the Steelers. And I think that that is a that is a great place for him to learn. And if he does learn, and if he becomes not just a non liability, but an actual asset to the offensive line, on top of Ciamalo, on top of this offensive line's chemistry coming from last season and the improvements that they were making, watch out, world! The Steelers might have some bullies up front on that offensive line, and they might be coordinated sooner rather than later, and open up more opportunities for the Steelers to be a competitive offense, whether it's running the ball, throwing the ball, or doing or, do, or, or having that balance that we've been talking about for so long. Thanks again for checking out the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, and we appreciate everyone who, call, who calls into the show at 412-223-6644, everyone who donates to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Again, um, donate by using the QR code on your screen right now or going to the link that's attached to the, in the description of this of this podcast or YouTube page, wherever you're, wherever you're consuming this podcast. And again, just thanks to everyone for being here every day and making us your first listen every day. I'm your host, Chris Carter. I'll be back tomorrow on Tuesday, getting you ready for week three of OTAs, the final week of OTAs, before we get to Steelers minicamp. We'll see you then right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.